What's my opinion on SARMs? So, you should absolutely stay away from SARMs. It is a terrible thing to do. It's gonna. I would like to talk about my SARMs experience. Why I took. Whether they shrink your dink. So, SARMs. What are they? For me, and like what I take now, if I want that little boost and that little edge, it is SARMs. Add some muscle, lose some body fat, and today we're gonna talk about SARMs, pro hormones, and what you should be doing. Wait, 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 wait. hold on a second. What even are SARMs? With everybody from your local broccoli heads to your favorite fitness influencers saying you should take them, it still seems like no one knows exactly what they are or how they even work. How do you know if you should take them? Are they even legal? As confusing as it may be, you know I'm Fitness Simplified and I got those answers for you. So sit back, relax, and let me explain. Today we're gonna to be discussing Selective Androgen Receptor Modulators, or SARMs. This supposedly magical steroid was first discovered in the late 1990s by Professor James T. Dalton at the University of Tennessee. He was actually researching potential treatments for prostate cancer, but his patients would just end up leaving his office more jacked than when they came in. So as any real gym rat would do. Dalton began researching further uses for the drug, such as increasing a patient's lean muscle mass. Since then, SARMs has slowly gained more and more popularity as people have been trying to experiment with the compound's muscle building capabilities. But before we jump into that, we first need to understand what exactly SARMs are. First of all, we need to clarify that SARMs are not the same as anabolic steroids. Unlike anabolic steroids, SARMs do not exhibit any androgenic activity. Androgenic, the noun form of androgen, which is a term for any hormone that regulates the development of male characteristics by binding to androgen receptors. In other words, anabolic steroids, which do exhibit androgenic activity, will often influence male characteristics such as hair growth, voice change, aggressive moods, acne, etc. What Professor Dalton was trying to find out back in the 90s was if it's possible to activate these androgen receptors in only the desired parts of the body, eliminating the unwanted side effects. This would then help patients with muscle wasting diseases maintain things like their bone density and muscle mass without having to shrink their precious jewels. That's where the name selective androgen receptor modulators came from. At least that was the idea. After almost 30 years since the drug's discovery, SARMs has yet to be proven safe. In fact, both the FDA and the Council Responsible for Nutrition have spoken out against the compound. Multiple times they have openly stated their advice against the use of SARMs with multiple other regulators joining in. The problem with SARMs is not that they're ineffective, but the terrible side effects that come along with regular supplementation. The first red flag of SARMs is that there's only been a handful of controlled studies done on the drugs in humans since its introduction almost three decades ago. Everyone is quick to trust anything that can be helpful to them in the gym, but allowing time for supplements to be studied before introducing them into your diet is very important. For example, a widely used supplement such as creatine, which has only recently become trusted by the majority of people, has had over 500 controlled studies on its regular and long-term use in humans. SARMs haven't had anywhere near to this amount of research, and it hasn't even been a great start for SARMs, with it not taking long to see the negative side effects from its use. And that brings us to SARMs' second red flag, the negative health side effects that have already been discovered. The two most popular SARM variants are Osterine and Ligandrol, and combined, these two variants have only had three clinical trials completed on their use. In these studies, participants experienced increases in lean body mass and a decrease in overall fat mass as theorized. However, the side effect list was nothing to ignore. The lighter list of adverse effects with things such as headaches, nausea, fatigue, back pain, and dry mouth, really nothing more than just a long night out. However, there was consistent evidence of endogenous testosterone suppression and even one case of a 24-year-old male participant who experienced rather considerable liver injury after ending his supplementation. Suppressing testosterone will not only work against anyone's aspirations towards muscle building, but can lead to things such as reduced libido, infertility, loss of bone density, muscle weakness, and even depression. So unless you think being jacked is worth being depressed and having a broken dick, then I'd steer clear of any SARMs use. SARMs final red flag is that they're literally illegal. I'm not even kidding. You may be asking, well, if it's illegal, then how are so many people taking it? And that's a fair question and one with actually an interesting answer. The buying and selling of SARMs as a research chemical is actually completely legal. However, it's the buying or selling of SARMs while marketing them towards human consumption that's illegal. This means that if they're in capsules or dosed specifically for humans, you can get arrested for buying or selling. This has led to many people purchasing SARMs as research chemicals, but then taking them without doctor supervision. If you search online for supplementation protocols, 
Many fitness influencers will recommend daily dosages that are 10 to 15 times any dosages that have ever been studied in clinical trials. This obviously has led to many users experiencing terrible side effects, some of which have even turned life-threatening. If you want to see for yourself, just take a few minutes and search up SARMs on things like Reddit threads. You'll hear some pretty scary horror stories. So now I hope you can understand why SARMs are definitely not the answer for your next effective gym supplement. As tempting as the idea of a natural supplement that's more effective than steroids sounds, there's more than enough evidence that proves the statement too good to be true. While there may be a future in its use in clinical cancer treatment and things of that nature, SARMs has no place in things like fitness and bodybuilding. I hope you found this video very informative and maybe even helpful if you are curious about SARMs. Even if you never had any intention of using them, it's very useful to understand how things like this work. That way you can steer clear of dangerous marketing strategies and turn away the creepy guy in the locker room trying to sell you supplements. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like and comment down below. If you have any ideas for future videos that you'd like to see, please let me know.